Hello guys, Zelfy here, and today I am with another guide. Today is the Battle Items Guide, as in pretty much all the items that you would see in competitive Pokemon, from your choice items, your life orbs, and even some of the more niche items as well. And the first one we are going to be starting off with is the Focus Ash. This is one of the earliest items you can get, and it allows you to basically pull off a lot of strategies, where you keep a mod in that would normally be weak against one of the opponent's attacks, survive a hit, and retaliate. And you get this by simply beating Chuck. He replaces the um, Dojo Master, um, where he would be in vanilla. And, you know, he's relatively difficult if you aren't prepared for him, but I found him be to a pretty easy boss. Uh, after you beat him for the first time, you get your Focus Sash. And, of course, you have to pick whatever of the uh, two fighting types in the back uh, that you want. Now... Um, Chuck also can give you a bonus item if you have a Pokemon with more than 150 attack uh, in EVs. And so I actually do have one, and that is my Cinderace. And if you just talk to him again with that Pokemon in the front, he'll give you a Galay Knight and an Expert Belt. The next fight that I want to talk about is Whitney. Now you can technically do this a lot earlier than Chuck, I just didn't. <laughs> Uh, and basically, Whitney is kind of difficult. You can find her to the right of Vermilion, I believe is the place. I, I don't know if you can actually do this before Misty, but I presume if it's like vanilla, you don't even have to fight Misty in order to uh, go through the bottom. Though there could be some Texases otherwise. Anyways, this is a very good item for the early game. I used this on my first run on a Clefairy, and this allowed me to take uh, quite a few hits of Clefairy until learn new blast to evolve. Uh, so it's good for some of the stone evolutions that you want to hold off on. Now, the next set of items is a bit of a tricky case. Uh, this is leftovers, and there's only two of them in the game. So if you don't get these now, um, you won't have leftovers for the rest of the game. And this is something that I learned the hard way when I first did my original run, which is sort of why I wanted to make this video. Um, Anyways, both of the Snorlax, the one on this route and the one right before Cycling Road, will have leftovers equipped. So there's two things that you do. One, you can send in a Pokemon with Thief, and you get Thief in Mount Moon. It's really hard to miss. Um, so yeah, you just do that and you can steal leftovers. Easy peasy. Or, um, alternatively, you can catch it. This is the other Snorlax, since I already stole the first leftovers. Um, and basically, you know, you have two leftovers. I ended up only having like two at once at like maybe Koga. After that, like my team diverged enough that I didn't need the uh I didn't need to run two leftovers. But still having them is nice. It's a nice backup item for your bulky Pokemon. And some other teams will probably use them a lot more than the team I was currently using. And you see here, I caught it without stealing it, so I could just pick up the leftovers um, from the box myself. Uh, the next items are the Flame Orb and the Toxic Orb. You get this pretty much as soon as you reach uh, Fuchsia City, and all you have to do is go right and come upstairs to this little uh, gateway area and talk to this professor. I believe in vanilla he gives you an EXP share, but here you get a Flame Orb and a Toxic Orb. Uh, this is good for setting up pre-battles. Uh, I used it with Obstagoon, and it became a really good wall breaker with, um, by being burned with Guts and putting a Choice Band on it. Anyways, after that, uh, you can get Choice Scarf from finding Price. Uh, Price is on Seafoam Islands, uh, on the side that you uh, are supposed to enter from, which is the right side after uh, leaving Fuchsia. And if you beat him, he gives you Glalotite and a uh, Choice Scarf. He also tells you about Articuno and the uh, Keldeo that's also remaining in Seafoam Islands. Uh, after that, you can also go straight to uh, Blaine's place, a Cinnabar, and you can fight Jasmine there. She's not too difficult, she can give you some trouble, but uh, after you beat her, she gives you an Agronite and a Choice Bin, very similar to what's what's her name, uh, Price and Chuck. Uh, but she also has another Chuck, such as, uh, like, Chuck does, where you need to show a Pokemon with 150 EVs in certain stat. In this case, you need to show her a Pokemon with 200, uh, with 150 defense uh, EVs. And that'd be my Corvus Squire, and she gives you an Assault Vest and a Steel Excite. Um, you can also go ahead and get Life Orb from Koga. Uh, Koga will give you Life Orb, 
for, once again, having 100 EVs in a specific stat. For Koga, his check is speed. Makes a lot of sense. And this is a phenomenal item to pick up. Uh, I am sad that I missed this on my first playthrough. Uh, he, the issue with a lot of these uh, checks is that they tell you that they'll give you the Mega Stone if you show them stuff, but they won't give you, or they won't tell you about the uh, bonus item, which is sort of why I was making this guy to begin with. Um, you also do the same thing with choice specs. Granted, you have to wait until you beat Blade, so you don't get it in the same uh, batch as the Choice Scarf, Life Orb, and Choice Band, and the Assault Vest for that matter too. But it's fine. As long as you show Blade a Pokemon with 200, or sorry, 150 uh, special attack EVs, then you'll be able to get your Charizard Knight Y, as well as your Choice Specs. Uh, once again, just another great item to have. Uh, and now moving on to this quick section right here. Um, all these Pokemon have Keen Eye, and you can find them within the first three routes of the game. So all the routes that branch out from Viridian, and all these Pokemon have Frisk. And Frisk got buffed in this game, uh, not only does it replace Canine, which is a pretty worthless ability, but it also improves the chances of finding an item on wild Pokemon, which is good because this allows you to scout their item and increase the chances. Um, so first off, we're going to go ahead and get the most annoying one out of the way, and this is Drifloon. And the only reason why Drifloon is annoying is because it has a uh, lower uh, percent cap or lower percent appear rate uh, compared to all the other Pokemon that you can find that have items on them. On top of that, it can only be done during the day because during night Drifloons come out and I don't know if Drifloons have air balloons. And lastly is the fact that if you hit it, you actually pop the air balloon so you have to catch a Drifloon in order to uh, claim your prize. Unless if there's some other move that steals items from your opponents but I can't remember what that would be at the top of my head. Um, nor would it be very accessible like Thief is. Anyways, after you catch your Drifloon that has Air Balloon, you can go ahead and snag it from the box, similar to what we did with Snorlax earlier. And the next one is uh, Weakness Palsy. You can get this from any Graveler or Golem. This includes the Alolan forms as well. Uh, as you can see, I'm just looking through the Dark Tunnel. Um, you can find Gravelers here pretty easy. They're like 20% chances. You can also find Golems in Victory Road. Uh, I believe they also have a high appear rate inside of there, and you can grab a weakness policy from them if you happen to find it. And this one's very, very easy to get. The next item that we're going to get is Psychic Seeds, and this can be uh, found going to, I believe the route is Route 9, and if you come up, and you go through all this, or you go right from Cerulean, and you counter execute, you can find Psychic Seeds here. But this route also has some other good tools for you to pick up on. Uh, for example, I believe there is a Terrain Extender and Rocky Helmet on the same route. I believe this is the only place you can get Rocky Helmet. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about Terrain Extender later. But yeah, the Shelmets here have Rocky Helmet, and the Adidas have... Um, terrain extenders. Uh, the Indies, I'm pretty sure, are like a 10% counter rate, so they're relatively common, um, you know, but you ha if you try to go for the other terrain extender mod, it'll also be a 10% counter, so just whatever works for you. I might as well pick up the terrain extender while I'm over here grabbing like Rocky Helmet and the, uh, or not Missy Seed, but Psychic Seed as well. Uh, next seed we are going to talk about, I believe, is the electric seed. Oh no, sorry, it's the grass seed. And we come up uh, from Vermilion, we go into the grass. Uh, this has to be done at night because bounce sweets are the only thing that spawn with grassy seeds, and they can only be found at night. Um, on top of that, in the same grass, you can also find Dedenes, and Dedenes also come with turret extenders. Once again, 10% uh, chance to find them. And I don't know what the odds are of a Pokemon holding the, um, what's it called, of the item with Frisk up. Anyways, yeah, you can go ahead and claim your items here. And we will move on to, I believe, uh, Electric Seas next. And this is the uh, lowest of the seed uh, appear rates. And I believe this is not by much. Tokodomaru has like a 15% chance to spawn. 
Uh, in the footage, you also see a Halucha spawn alongside the Togedemaru, which is kind of rare because Halucha is only a 2% on this route. Uh, I go ahead and get a Power Herb from here. Uh, so you could get a Power Herb from here, but there's a much, much easier place to find farm Power Herbs, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But yeah, if you find Togedemaru's here, uh, you can also use Steve and grab them. Uh, you can also bring out the um, appearance rate of them by using Magnet Pole or Static if you want to. As for the Power Herb that's easier to get, uh, you can find Nuzleaves or C Dots anywhere. Uh, at nighttime, you can find a C Dot in Route 1, so that's a good place to check if you really want a Power Herb. Um, yeah, it's really simple. Much easier than trying to get the 2% with Halucha. Uh, for the Mental Herb, uh, we are going uh, to, I forget what route this is, but it's to the left of Lavender, and all you gotta do is find a Lombre. Uh, there's plenty around here, they have like a 20% encounter rate. Um, they're really easy to find, and you can grab your Mental Herb here. I believe you also grab a Mental Herb in a spot that we'll talk about later, but you know, it's still here. Also, in the same route, you can find the Misty Seeds, and I believe this completes our collection of seeds. Uh, the Comfy here have it, and Comfy has a 10% spawn rate. It's a bit difficult to get, but it's whatever. The next section we're going to be talking about has a lot of stuff, so bear with me. On Route 14, and keep in mind, this is also the same route where you can farm defense EVs relatively quickly. Uh, you can come here, and if you find a Palisade, you can get bottle caps from them, and bottle caps are very important because they allow you to change to your hidden ability or change off your hidden ability in Saffron City. The Pelippers here also have uh, a chance to have Lucky Egg. In fact, I think they have Lucky Eggs pretty often. I don't know the exact um, percent on that, but I feel like I've seen a lot of Lucky Eggs on the Pelippers here. Uh, on top of that, the Pelippers can also have Damp Rocks, and this is for your rain teams. As well as the Torkoals here that have the Heat Rocks. I managed to get both of them side by side, so I'm just going to go ahead and steal them both here. One more thing to note is that I talked about Mental Herb also being here. Uh, occasionally you can find Swan Loons here. I think they are both day and nights. Uh, they're also 20% encounter. So if you want to pick up a Mental Herb here instead of where you get the Misty Seed, then you go ahead and get Mental Herb right here as well. The next item we're going to get is the Ice Rock. Now, the Ice Rock uh, can be found in CFM, of course. You go down to layer 3. I'm just taking these two uh, drops real quick. And you start right up and down here. And I believe there are two Pokemon that can hold it. One is the Abomas, though. And the other is the Alola Ninetales. Both set hail normally. So this makes a lot of sense. I don't know if Vanillux has it. The dock I was using to get this information from actually didn't say that Abomas though can have Icy Rock. So that was news to me. Uh, I might as well spread that news here. Anyways, they both have a 20% uh, chance of spawning regardless, it, regardless if it's day or night. So feel free to thief and pick up your Icy Rock here. As for the Smooth Rock, this one is a bit more difficult. And I could be wrong, but Hippopotas may be able to have Smooth Rock. Uh, the issue with Hippopotas is that it's a 1% spawn rate. And you could try to farm it with uh, the Dex Nav in Diglett's Cave. But there's also this method I've provided here too. Uh, basically, just go to Safari Zone. You go to the left side, which is Area 3 slash 4. Uh, when I was looking up, it called it Area 3, but on the dock it was called Area 4. And anyways, uh, I caught like 6 have out ons there. I used a Sweet Center, so I wasn't losing steps, by the way. And then we just go to the box and hope we got lucky. I don't know if Frisk or Magnet Pole can affect the chance rates. Uh, inside of the Safari Zone, but, you know, out of six of how odds, we got one there. And the final item here is actually Heavy Duty Boots. We can only get this after we have all the badges and we fought the Rival before the Elite Four. Um, this one's uh, not that hard to get. You just go up and grab your Heavy Duty Boots there. Uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, uh, and hopefully, hopefully it was helpful. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure to leave a like and comment down below and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later.